Hello and welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. The NLA has unanimously demanded the government of India to repeal the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. This was decided at the 10th session of the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly, where the issue on AFSPA was deliberated today in Kohima. The Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council has carried out a huge eviction drive at the Assam Nagaland border in Bokajan. The eviction drive has been carried out at Block 3 of Lahorijan, Dudu Colony. Bollywood actor Ashwara Rai on Monday joined the Enforcement Directorate investigation in the Panama Papers leak case. She reached the ED office in the second half of the day following the agency's notice. Following the government's introduction of the election law a Bill 2021 in the Lok Sabha, AIMIM Chief Asaduddin Owaisi on Monday said that the centre is curtailing the independence of the Election Commission by bringing the legislation. Now for the news in details. The Nagaland Legislative Assembly has unanimously demanded the Government of India to repeal the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. This was decided at the 10th session of the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly, where the issue on AFSPA was deliberated today in Kohima. Ten minutes each was allotted to three members from different political parties like NPF, NDPP, BJP and Independent in the discussion of AFSPA. The Nagaland Legislative Assembly vehemently condemned the massacre that took place in the Oting Tiru village area in Mon district on December 4th, where indiscriminate firing by the 21 para special forces of the Indian Army led to the death of 13 innocent people, followed by killing of one innocent person by security forces at Mon town on 5th December and injuring of 35 persons during the incidents. Besides condemning the brutal act, resolutions were passed during the session in connection to AFSPA. The Chief Minister of Nanglin, in his speech, amongst other important points, said that we should also remember that repealing of AFSPA will take some time as it will require parliamentary approval and need to convince the government of India that the present situation in Nanglin does not require or justify declaring the state as a disturbed area for the purpose of imposing the provisions of AFSPA. Leader of NPF and former Chief Minister of Nagaland, Tia Ziliang, also stated that all the incidents against civilians has fueled danger and resentment against the Indian Army, generating sharp reactions from many parts of Northeast India and the country in general. Saying that if the matter is not resolved with all sincerity, particularly on the part of the Government of India, the massacre of helpless and innocent civilians under Mon District may become a huge stumbling block to the ongoing peace talks. The outcome of our discussion and the resolution adoption, the draft, I will read out. Number one, the Nagaland Legislative Assembly vehemently condemned, condemns the massacre took, that took place in 14 Tiru village area in Mon district on 4th December 2021. In the indiscriminate firing by the 21st Para Special Forces of the Indian Army, in which 13 innocent people were killed, followed by killing of one innocent person by security forces at Mon Town on 5th December 2021, and injuring of 35 persons during the incidents. Two, the House called for an apology from the appropriate authority along with an assurance that justice will be delivered by applying the law of the land upon those who per perpetrated the inhuman massacre and upon those who are responsible for the incident. Three, the House appeals to the citizens of Mon district, its civil societies, 
the citizens of the state and mass-based organization to extend cooperation to the government and its agencies in our collective efforts to demand justice and to restore normalcy in the interest of all these citizens. The House appreciates and supports citizens and civil society organizations in their demands for repealing of ASPA and delivery of justice while appealing to all sections to follow democratic norms and non-violence in our collective endeavor towards realizing realizations of peace and delivery of justice. Four, the Naga people have been crying for peace and early solution for the long-pending Naga political issue. It is of the paramount importance that people's voice is heard and respected. The Karbianglong Autonomous Council has carried out an eviction drive at the Assam Nagaland border in Bokajan. The eviction drive has been carried out at Block 3 of Lahorijan, Dudu Colony. The Karbianglong Autonomous Council along with the district administration and the police carried out the drive. The district administration of Karbianglong has also imposed Section 144 of the CRPC in areas of Lahorijan, Block No. 3 under Borjan Mauza of Bogajan Subdivision to maintain public peace during the eviction carried out by the authority of Karbianglong Autonomous Council. The leader of the Naga People's Front Legislature Party, T.R. Ziliang, has called for establishing the identities of the military personnel who carried out the ambush on December 4th in Mon District that led to the death of 13 civilians. Speaking during the 10th session of the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly in Kohima, the former Chief Minister said that the identities of those involved, including the informers, must be established. In regard to the special investigation team probing the matter, Ziliang said two important questions to come out with clarity in their investigation report should be about who or which intelligence agency provided inputs to the Indian Army in Assam to lay ambush on vehicle carrying civilians, daily wage earners. Second, who informed the Ministry of Home Affairs that the vehicle carrying civilians did not stop when the army personnel gave a signal to stop, for which the Home Minister misled the House and the Parliament, he said. In the first place, he said the identity of the army personnel along with the commanding officer should be established by the SIT and the state government should write to the army headquarters to place the culprits under suspension for fair conduct of the investigations. Secondly, Ziliang said that the same treatment should be applied on the informers because they are equally responsible for the incident. Further, the NPF Legislative Party leader said that the Protection of Human Rights Act has been legislated to establish a national and state human rights commission but so far the state of Nagaland along with other states like Arunachal Pradesh, Goa, Haryana, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Tripura and Uttarakhand have not established a state human rights commission till today. In this regard, Ziliang urged the authority to see to it that necessary action is initiated so that Constitution of Human Rights Commission in Nagaland is successfully implemented before the 13th Legislative Assembly concludes. Ziliang further said 
to have learned that the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative had recently called upon the state government to start the process of setting up a state human rights commission in Nagaland. It is the right step that the state government should also take note of the matter with all seriousness so that a full-fledged human rights commission is established in Nagaland in the interest of the people of the state, he said. Assam government on Monday said that it will discuss and consider a proposal to introduce a bill against mob lynching in line with states like Manipur, Rajasthan and West Bengal. Replying to the issue of bringing in legislation to stop incidents of mob lynching, Assam Parliamentary Affairs Minister Piyush Hazarika said that in the assembly, the state government has not so thought about it so far. Hazarika said that as of now, the Assam government has not looked at the anti-mob lynching laws of states like Manipur, Rajasthan and West Bengal. The minister mentioned several cases of mob lynching that took place in Assam in the last few years that are being tried in fast-track courts under various sections of the Indian Penal Code. On November 29th, a 28-year-old Assam Students' Union leader was lynched by a group of people in Jorhat after a heated argument over an accident in front of scores of onlookers who did nothing to stop but were busy filming the incident on mobile phones. Raising the issue in the House on the first day of the winter session, BJP MLA Mrinal Saikya said that instances of witch hunting and mob lynching are continuing unabated in different places of Assam, despite an act against witch hunting already in force in the state. Demanding a detailed discussion, Saikya urged the government to bring in a strong act against all forms of mob lynching in the state. The Assam government has notified the Assam Witch Hunting Prohibition Prevention and Protection Act 2015 on October 1, 2018, making every offence related to witch hunting as cognizable, non bailable and non compoundable making provisions for imprisonment up to seven years, along with a fine of rupees 5 lakh for identifying and calling a person which. India has registered the highest ever annual foreign direct investment inflow of $81.97 billion in 2020 to 21. Commerce and Industry Ministry said that the FDI inflows in the last seven financial years is over $440 billion, which is nearly 58% of the total FDI inflow in the last 21 financial years. The ministry said top five countries from where FDI equity inflows were received during 2014 to 2021 are Singapore, Mauritius, USA, Netherlands and Japan. Computer software and hardware sector attract the largest share of FDI inflows followed by service trading and telecommunication. The ministry said that the government has taken various steps to boost domestic and forest investments in India. With the emergence of fresh cases of the new Omicron variant of coronavirus, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Monday said that the samples of all positive cases of the new variant will be sent for genome sequencing and urged the centre to allow administration of booster doses of COVID-19 vaccine to fully vaccinated individuals. Briefing reporters here today, Kejriwal said he is requesting the centre to allow booster doses for people who are fully vaccinated. Given the rise in cases for some days, now all positive cases in Delhi will be sent for genome sequencing for Omicron, he said. In order to strengthen the home isolation program, a review meeting will be held on December 23rd. The chief minister said that the Delhi government will establish Delhi Teachers University and a bill related to its legislation will be brought in the upcoming assembly session. The government has decided to come up with Delhi Teachers University. Meanwhile, six new cases of COVID-19 Omicron variant have been reported in Delhi, increasing the case tally to 28. As Delhi yesterday recorded 107 fresh COVID-19 cases, cases, the highest in six months, a health expert said the spike could be due to the Omicron variant. The, De the Delhi government on Saturday converted four private hospitals into dedicated centers for the treatment 
of the new COVID-19 variant Omicron. The four hospitals are Sir Gangaram Hospital, Max Hospital in Saket, Fortis Hospital in Vasant Kunj and Batra Hospital in the Tuklabad area of the national capital. Earlier, only government-run Loknayak J. Prakash Hospital was designated for the Omicron treatment. अभी तक केवल एयरपोर्ट पे जो लोग आ रहे थे उनकी हम टेस्टिंग कर रहे थे अब हमने ये तय किया है कि सारे जितने भी पॉजिटिव केस दिल्ली के अंदर निकलेंगे सबको हम जिनोम टेस्टिंग के लिए भेजेंगे केंद्र सरकार से मेरा निवेदन है कि अभी दिल्ली में हमने लगभग निन्यानवे प्रतिशत लोगों को फर्स्ट डोज दे दी है सत्तर प्रतिशत लोगों को सेकेंड डोज दे दी है हम चाहते हैं कि अब बूस्टर डोज अलाउ की जाए इस बारे में केंद्र सरकार परमिशन देता है तो मेरी केंद्र सरकार से निवेदन है कि जो जो लोग दो डोज ले चुके हैं उनको बूस्टर डोज देने की इजाजत दी जाए Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh today visited Tainem village in Longchong, Maipe block of Ukrul district to attend the state government's community outreach program organized by the district administration Ukrul at LM block office complex. With this, he has become the first chief minister who has visited the interior village located around 80 kilometers from the state capital of Imphal. Raja Sabha MP Maharaja Sana Jauba Laishamba and Loktak Development Authority's Chairman L. Sushindro accompanied the Chief Minister. During the historic visit, he inaugurated the Lung Chong Maipe Police Outpost, a branch office of the Manipur State Cooperative Bank Limited, SDO and BDO office and a one-stop centre Saki, and fulfilled the long-awaited aspiration of the people for the past 30 years. He also distributed benefits of different schemes to selected beneficiaries. A Delhi court on Monday granted exemption from personal appearance to former Union Minister P. Chidambaram in the ongoing Aircel Maxis case of the Central Bureau of Investigation and Enforcement Directorate. Meanwhile, Karthi Chidambaram appeared before Delhi's Rouse Avenue Court. Chidambaram's lawyer counsel Arshdeep Singh Khurana informed Special Judge M. K. Nakpal that the court that they are both on anticipatory bail in this matter. The court directed them to move the regular bail in the matter. Meanwhile, P. Chidambaram, through his application, informed that he is not able to appear before the court as he had a prefixed travelling schedule. The court allowed his exemption application. The court directed the probe agencies to supply copies of charge sheet and documents to the accused. The accused has appeared before the Delhi court in pursuance of summons issued against them after the court had taken cognizance of the charge sheets filed by probe agencies in the matter. All the accused mentioned in the charge sheet of CBI and ED were asked to appear before the court on December 20, 2021. Agency has mentioned several individuals and firms accused in the charge sheet. A bogus case which has been foisted upon me due to political reasons. These are apparently about in alleged incidents which happened in 2006, a good 15 years ago, for which I am no knowledge about, no connection, none whatsoever about. I've been pulled into this only because I have a prominent last name and it's convenient for the government to target us politically. We have full faith in the court process and I'm sure we'll be vindicated in due course. But uh, it's unfortunate that many people, including former bureaucrats who have been pulled into this as collateral damage. 
Following the government's introduction of the election laws amendment bill in the Lok Sabha, AIMIM chief Asaduddin OIC on Monday said that the centre is curtailing the independence of the election commission by bringing the legislation. Speaking to ANI, OIC said that the bill violates the Supreme Court judgment. Also, the government has no legislative competence and linking the voter ID with Aadhaar violates the fundamental right to privacy as defined by Supreme Court's Puduswami judgment, he said. Making the Aadhaar card authentication mandatory also violates the Supreme Court's judgment, he said. The AIMIM MP said that the House is not competent to enact a law that violates the fundamental rights of citizens. Aadhaar is not proof of Indian citizenship and whether the name on the voters list is a completely different thing. Voter enrollment and issuance of voter IDs are carried out in pursuance of constitutional duty by a constitutional authority, he said. Bringing this bill, the government is interfering in the independence of the election commission, adding that this will allow the government to defranchise, profile voters and discriminate between beneficiaries of various government schemes. It will end up violating the principles of the sacred ballot adult franchise also, he added. As the lower house of the parliament assumed, resumed on Monday, the election laws bill was introduced by the government. Government and issuing of voter IDs is carried out in pursuance of constitutional purpose by independent constitutional body, subjecting voter enrollment to Aadhaar, warriors, independence, sanctity of the constitutional process. Lastly, sir, this bill allows government the power to suppress, disenfranchise, profile voters and discriminate with, between beneficiaries of government schemes. It will end up violating the principles of secret ballot, universal address, franchise and free and fair elections. That is why, sir, I am asking for a division, sir. I want division, sir. Sir, division, sir. They sir, division, sir. No, sir. no, no. They no. division, sir. Amid opposition uproar, the center on Monday introduced the Mediation Bill 2021 in Rajya Sabha to promote and facilitate mediation, especially institutional mediation. The government subsequently moved the bill for further consideration into the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Law and Justice on demand of the opposition parties. The bill also seeks for resolution of disputes, commercial or otherwise, enforce mediated settlement agreements, provide for a body for the registration of mediators. The purpose of the bill is to encourage community mediation and to make online mediation an acceptable and cost-effective process. Bollywood actor Ashwara Rai on Monday joined the Enforcement Directorate investigation in the Panama Papers leak case. She reached the ED office in the second half of the day following the agency's notice. The agency needs to record the statement of the 48-year-old actress in the case over allegations of stashing wealth abroad under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. The actress had earlier submitted records on the foreign payments under investigation. The ED had issued notices to the Bachchan family asking them to explain their foreign remittances since 2004 under the liberalized remittance scheme of the Reserve Bank of India. That's all for Prime at 9. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.